Today on The Daily Bellerina, we're taking a look at Martin Van Buren. Hello, welcome to The Daily Bellerina. Please don't forget to subscribe and take a look at the questions down in the description. Also, I'd love to see your answer to question number five in the comments below. So Martin Van Buren, eighth president of the United States from 1837 to 1841, of course, a member of the Democratic Party. At only five foot six inches tall, he's one of our shortest presidents, not quite as short as James Madison, but not a whole lot taller. So let's take a look at Martin Van Buren's background. So Van Buren was born December 5th, 1782 in Kinderhook, New York, and he's really considered to be the first true American president because he's born after the American Revolution, after we really gained full independence from Britain. Um, his family, of course, had a farm. They also ran a tavern where a lot of political uh, meetings were held, and so that's where he's kind of first exposed to politics. Um, at age 14, he gets an apprenticeship with, a, with an attorney there in the Kinderhook area, and then, of course, subsequently goes on to become a lawyer himself. But in 1807, uh, Martin Van Buren married married his cousin, Hannah Hose. And before you just sim simply say, oh, that's gross, Remember, that was a pretty common practice back then in the 1700s, 1800s for you to marry a cousin, all right? But together, they had four children. Um, and actually, two of those children later served in Van Buren's cabinet uh, when he was president. But uh, Hannah, she actually ends up dying of tuberculosis in 1819, and actually Martin Van Buren never does remarry. So Martin Van Buren's political career really began in New York State, where he was involved in very much in state politics there in the, you know, the State House of New York. But in 1821, he was elected to the U.S. Senate. And in 1828, he gave up that Senate seat to go back and be the governor of New York but actually he gave up that too just a few months later to become a member of Andrew Jackson's cabinet during Andrew Jackson's presidency. And it's really during Andrew Jackson's presidency that Martin Van Buren really makes a name for himself being part of Jackson's cabinet. And actually during this time, uh, Van Buren earns this nickname, Little Magician, because he helps Jackson to basically find his way out of very tight political situations. But in 1832, he becomes Jackson's vice president, okay, for Jackson's second term in office. And then basically it just leads right into 1836, where Jackson, then, or I'm sorry, where Van Buren then runs for president and wins election over three Whig party candidates. And basically he ran on the platform or ran on the idea that he was going to continue Andrew Jackson policies. Now, speaking of campaigning, this is where you really get into what arguably might be the most important contribution Martin Van Buren has to uh, American history. During his campaign, people who supported him would wear or make signs that would say, okay, for old Kinderhook, because that was the town where Van Buren was born. So to say that you were in favor of Martin Van Buren, you would say, okay. Well, of course, that catches on as being a phrase to say I'm good with something or yes. And so technically, even to this day, when you say, OK, what you're really saying is I support Martin Van Buren. So that's, you know, a lot of there is some argument of where it actually came from. But a lot of people point to his uh, campaign as being where we get the term OK from. But Martin Van Buren's presidency really started out really great. The economy was doing well. Things were were great in the United States. But very quickly, we have the Panic of 1837 set in, which was an economic depression that, you know, closed hundreds of businesses, thousands of people lost their jobs, and it actually prompts a lot of people to begin to look west and begins to push for that idea of manifest destiny, all right? So, um, to, to find better opportunities out in the West, uh, a lot of people began to follow. So that was a big part of his presidency. But really, you know, he was pretty ineffective in dealing with the Depression itself, and it actually continued throughout his entire presidency and is really a major factor why Martin Van Buren was only a one-term president because he just simply didn't really do a whole lot to be able to deal with that uh, Depression. But I guess on a positive note about his presidency, Van Buren was very opposed to the annexation of Texas or adding Texas as a new state because it's at this time, of course, Texas is gaining their independence from Mexico and wants to become part of the Union. But Van Buren's big argument for why he did not want to allow Texas in is because he did not want to see the spread of slavery. Van Buren was against the spread of slavery uh, in the United States. But in 1840, he is easily defeated. Well, not easily defeated. It was a rather close election. But in the Electoral College, uh, William Henry Harrison, a Whig candidate, defeats 
Martin Van Buren, all right? But actually, Van Buren comes back and runs for president again in 1848 on the Free Soil Party ticket. And the Free Soil Party was a party that was focused on not allowing slavery to expand to the West. But Van Buren died in 1862 at the age of 79 in Kinderhook, New York. Now, one little side note here about Van Buren in his last few years. He actually wrote an autobiography, right, in the, the story of his life. So he writes this big book, you know, hundreds of pages, you know, thousands of paragraphs. But interestingly, in that entire biography, there's no mention of his wife, Hannah, at all. Admittedly, she had died years before, but at the same time, she did give him four children, and you would think anyone would write about their wife as part of their biography, part of their life story. So anyway, that's Martin Van Buren. Hopefully you learned something there. Don't forget to answer, answer question number five in the comments below, and thanks for watching.